going on. Give us the perspective overseas. Internationally, I guess it was uh, to be expected. Uh, dismay, I guess, is uh, the general line. And everybody uh, was watching this very closely, meaning would, would other countries, you know, do what the U.S. has done and, and, and bolt from this agreement? Doesn't at this stage look like that's going to happen? We have a very important meeting today in Brussels at uh, EU headquarters, top uh, European Union officials and the prime minister of China. And they're expected to, uh, after hours of discussions, to uh, reaffirm their, uh, their, if you will, intent to go forward with, uh, the, with the Paris Accord. And, of course, inherent in that is not, it's not a one-time deal. Uh, watching it about a year and a half ago at the conclusion in Paris, the idea is to, is to meet up about every five years, see where we are, and then tweak it and, and go forward. So it's something that's going to take decades upon decades. And uh, certainly other countries now are saying, well, that's too bad about the U.S. It's a major player, but we're going to be going forward with this anyways. Well, the president tells us he's going to renegotiate the deal and um, everything will be all right. What do the uh, uh, other countries think about that? Yeah, well, again, this was something that obviously the other countries had talked about, and you could see within minutes of uh, the president talking in the Rose Garden that you had Germany, France, and Italy already uh, having talked about this. They issued a joint statement saying that the accord is not uh, renegotiable. That is their starting position. Now, if the art of the deal is in, uh, is in hammering it out, we'll see what may be in in the future in the coming months maybe years but at this stage of the game europe is saying look uh it, you're supposed to have signed up you didn't uh we're going to carry on without you what about the president's assertion that this was as, as what you heard in the intro less about the climate and more about hampering the u.s economy well i tell you it's it's one of those things it's sort of like a parallel uh, if you will look at the european union the richest countries chuck in more than they get out. The poorer countries get more out than they put in. And because this accord, uh, this accord is very different from Kyoto in that all countries, rich countries throwing in more and poor countries, all got together and decided what they can do to try to mitigate some of the uh, climatic changes occurring on, on the planet right now. And, uh, you know, so there's some going to be losers and some going to be uh, winning out of this thing. That is, that is true, but the ultimate goal is to try to uh, turn around and try to uh, get back to a, a situation where greenhouse gases are not ever expanding each and every year. And of course, things like solar are expanding uh, in many, many countries around the world. So this thing has its own momentum, if you will, irregardless of what governments do or say. Looking at it from an international perspective, uh, who are the winners and losers um, in this deal? Uh, well, I guess the losers uh, potentially would be some of the, uh, the smaller Pacific islands that are, you know, one foot above sea level uh, because they're going to be the first to uh, feel the crunch. Um, some of the winners, you could say China is a, is a winner because a lot of their, uh, if you will, enforcement provisions don't kick in for, uh, for about 13 more years. Um, but again, you're, you're almost handing off the, the mantle to China as well in this regard, to be the one and only world leader when it comes to the ocular of climate change. Uh, the U.S. is didn't show up, not in the stadium, not playing today. China is. China can grow on this. Does that uh, worry anyone uh, overseas that the United States appears to have kind of abdicated that role as a, a leader in the, the fight against global warming? Yeah, though, as I said at the top, there's dismay. Everybody wanted the U.S. to be there. And again, this was an incredibly difficult, difficult negotiation process. And I remember just catching the last few days of it a year and a half ago in Paris, burning the midnight oil. They were supposed to end on a Thursday. They didn't. They're supposed to end on a Friday. They didn't. They ended up on a, as I recall, I think late on a Saturday. Um, and it was uh, it was difficult. Uh, but but they got there in the end. And there are people are saying, look, the U.S., uh, you know, was, is a very important player there, maybe the most important player there. Now they're gone. Uh, and again, the worry would be others could uh, bolt as well. Doesn't look like that's going to happen, but uh, I know it is really, really a dismay, I guess, yeah. uh, many people around the world. Last question for you, Tom. I mean, is there anyone in the international community who maybe not publicly, but kind of behind the scenes or privately is saying, whew, you know, we're glad the U.S. did that. Um, it makes it easier for us to, to get out now. 
<clears throat> Nobody publicly saying that at all. No. And, and no rumblings of that? No. All right. Well, it looks like we're going to go it our, ourselves. Tom Rivers, uh, ABC News correspondent from London, thank you very much. Take care. It is 6.58.